I think we found the perfect compromise while we were in Scotland. So it's always going to be tough missing out on birthdays and things like that. Um, our first major incident. Well, I haven't had a bath in over a year. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. So today we're going to be discussing the topic that people ask us is what is it like life on the road and is van life for you? That's right. We are going to ask each other five honest questions about our van life experience. And so hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will have a better understanding whether or not this lifestyle is for you. So grab yourself a coffee, hit that subscribe button and join us. <music> So let's get started with question number one. What's your absolute favourite park up? Is it mountains, forests or beaches? That's a tough one. Well, as you know, my love, I do love a woods. I love the woodlands. I love nature. I love anything wildlife like that. And I know you like a beach. Yeah. But I think we found the perfect compromise while we were in Scotland, where we had mountains, we had a beach, and on the side of the beach, we had the woodlands, and I think that ticked every single box. Yeah, that was in Cairngorm, so it was magical. Beautiful. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one, because I like them all, but if I had to choose one, it, it's definitely woodlands for me, because I like the sound of birds and nature and watching rabbits and deer. Question two. Mm. How do you feel about missing out on birthdays, holidays, or just hanging out with your family and friends? It's always going to be tough missing out on birthdays and things like that. Um, but the world is a small place now, and we, you know, with technology such as like video calls and text messages and things like that, you know, we're always at hand, and we can always ring them or talk to them. Um, plus, you know, we're never a million miles away, so you know certain things we can get back for quite easily um as for friends you know we see a lot of our friends on the road you know a lot of our friends are fellow van lifers um so yeah so i hope that answers the question on that one question three how good are we at handling van breakdowns <laughs> We're not. We're not mechanics. We don't have a clue about anything to do with the van. But I guess you learn as you go along. Um, our first major incident was our clutch went. And luckily for us, we managed to be able to pull over on a safe side of the road. And we thought, well, this is a good enough place to stay for the night. And we'll deal with this tomorrow morning. And we'll call the RAC out. Um, and then we got that done. And the another time that comes to mind, it was the middle of winter and we were up at Ben Nevis and we realised that our exhaust had a massive hole in. So Steve managed to get one of those sleeves from a garage and unfortunately for him, the weather was a bit shitty and it was very cold and he had to put that on um, outside Ben Nevis Inn, which was quite amusing. And then I think there was a time at the Cairngorm Mountains, we left our lights on all night and we had no battery the next day but luckily for us we have a battery pack charger that we managed to recharge our, ba uh, our battery on our van and was able to leave the next day. So I guess the moral of the story is we have a really good breakdown cover and I guess you just learn as you go along living on the road because again our side door went as well and we were lucky enough to have some friends in the van life community who could help us out so, so i guess it's just a matter of things happen and i guess you learn you learn how to do things on the road so steve how important are the creature comforts for you like having a shower a bath and even a toilet well, I haven't had a bath in over a year. Ooh. Some men have not had a bath in longer. But by no means are we filthy. This is where we wash. We do strip washes most days. Uh, we have showers when we can. 
And as for the toilets, well, we have a toilet down there, which is a bucket. Oh, we shit in a bucket. We also were lucky enough about a month or so ago to be gifted a shower which walks off a water pump. So we can boil the kettle, pour it into a bucket, everything, and with the pump, it will just pump uh, hot water over us. Outdoor shower. So, yeah. Question number five. How do you feel living with less, i.e. minimal stuff and tiny spaces? Oh, I love it. I believe Steve loves it too. He, he nice and tidy. We're both tidy people. Um, what we own is what we need. The most important thing in the van is our puppy and of course my Stephen. Um, I think it's freeing, not having loads of stuff around. It's the important things. You don't need a lot this lifestyle and I think this is the lifestyle for people who don't like to have a lot it's just free and you just need what you need it goes to show that the stuff that you carry around in your house is just worthless to tap so babe do you love nature enough to be around it all the time yeah it's the answer basically it's just so many variables in there you know got the changing of the seasons you know, so from winter you go into spring where everything all new life and, you know, you got all the, like, the wild garlic and the garlic mustard and all things like that. And you got all the bird song and things. And you go into the summer, which, you know, everything is green, everything is, you know, glowing and looking amazing. Into autumn where you got all the fruit coming out from the foraging. You know, blackberries, apples, you know, everything's there. You can just pick to your heart's content. And then, you know, so when you're going for walks, you're seeing something different all the time. Every day is a different walk. It's just so much to see. So, babe, what do you hope to gain from van life? Mm. I hope to gain... Um, I wouldn't say I've gained it, I'd say I've already got it, is a more freeing lifestyle. Um, I'm happier, freer, um, I tread more gently upon the earth, I'm more one with nature, um, I'm more connected with nature and I know at the end of my day that I'm doing the right thing for us and for me is living a more eco-friendlier, sustainable, happier lifestyle. So my love, how do you cope with long periods of solitude? Sometimes it's just us on the road. Yeah, it is. Um, I couldn't think of anything better to be fair. Um, we meet up with friends and things like that on, in the festivals. And then we can retreat to just being us again and living how we wish to live. You know, um, we can go off to for a walk. We can go off to explore wherever we want. Just us to answer to. You know, and it's always a really good compromise. But every minute spent with you is best. Mm. You know, it's just, it's not lonely. It's just amazing. Just an amazing life to be able to live. Question number nine. Can you stay organised in a tiny space? Of course you can. It's like every other day as its routine, doesn't it? So when you've cooked, you wash up, everything has its spe uh, spot, so everything gets put away. You've got to need, you do need a lot of storage space, which we have a plenty of, so clothes get put away in their spot you've got under storage units and your seat in bed area and everything just has its space so yeah easy organized if not so more in a smaller space so babe question number 10 how comfortable are you with the unpredictable income streams um actually it's not as bad as i thought it might be um Luckily for us, we have an online shop, so 
um, people are really kind when they go over and they buy stuff that we make, um, which is just things that I find out on the road. Um, so that provides us with a very small income. Um, we're also lucky enough now to make an income from um, some of our social media, YouTube in particular, and of course the kindness of, uh, of a lot of our friends and subscribers. But yeah, um, it can be a little tough sometimes. You've got to rain, tighten your belt a little bit. But we have a lifestyle where we don't need a lot of money. And um, we're kind of just surviving hand to mouth. And we kind of like that. It makes it more uh, raw and organic and makes you feel more alive. So what do you think guys? Do you feel you're ready for van life? Yeah, and if you've got any hard burning questions, drop us a comment. You know, if you've got any fears or there's other questions we haven't answered, yeah, please just drop us a comment. And obviously, Billy has struggled on, but she's got through it like a trooper <laughs> with this poorly eye. Yeah. We're into the third week now and it's, it's not getting much better. No, but so there is some parts of the video where you probably saw I was straining a little bit. That's because my good eye isn't dealing with the bright light that well because my bad eye hasn't seen any daylight for almost a month. And it streams a lot because obviously I've got blisters and stuff inside the eyeball. So some days was a little bit of a struggle, but I can't do anything. I can't read. I can't. I can't watch um, any YouTubes, so I haven't been forced to make YouTube videos. I want to do something I want to do because otherwise I'm just sleeping all day. So thanks for bearing with us at this time. Yeah. Thanks for all the support you guys yeah, have given yeah. us. It's been totally, totally overwhelming. Yeah, really. You guys are so kind with your personal messages that you've been sending me yeah. and Steve. And yes, Steve is doing a beautiful job looking after me. Absolutely amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. For that, that nurse's uniform was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't know whose idea that was. But anyway, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Until next time. Safe travels. See you next time.